Professor Scafaro here again, and this is the second video on chemical bonding, it's on covalent bonding. So let's take a look at those cute dogs first, you know, the short video about uh, covalent bonding that the dogs are going to show us. Covalent chemical bonds involve the sharing of a pair of valence electrons by two atoms. There is also what is called polar covalent bonds. These are covalent bonds in which the sharing of the electron pair is unequal. The result is a bond where the electron pair is displaced toward the more electronegative atom. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. trained so well. Well, let's go on and actually talk about covalent bonding again here using our uh, PowerPoint. So in the animation that you see there on the right, it is demonstrating how a covalent bond is made. There are two hydrogen atoms. Hydrogen has a single proton in its nucleus and one electron in its outer shell. It only has one shell because it only has one electron. Um, remember that uh, when we talk about electron shells that the first shell always held two, then the second could hold eight, and then the last one that we usually talk about um, is the third shell and it can hold eight too. So here for hydrogen it actually has a place for another electron and that's going to help us form these covalent bonds because what the two atoms do is to share electrons so that any given time there are always two electrons around each of the nucleuses for these atoms. So part of the time the two, nucle uh, two electrons are around uh, one of the hydrogen atoms and part of the time the two electrons are around the nucleus of the other hydrogen atom, and when that happens, they're bonded to each other, and because they share them, it's referred to as a covalent bond. Let's take a look at a couple of other things that we can see here. I'll use the drawing tool now. Note that we're symbolizing a covalent bond here by a line. So that line is telling us in structural terms, if we were looking at a picture of a molecule, we would see lines between all of the atoms that formed it, and those lines would tell us that these are covalent bonds. And when we see one line between two atoms, like we do here for our two hydrogens, it tells us that there is a pair of electrons being shared, two electrons that are being shared here in this case. And again, you can see, if I outline the cloud for both of those um, hydrogen atoms with their individual nuclei, the two atoms together are sharing that pair of electrons. And that creates stability in their valence shell, and that's the bond between them. All right, let's take a look at the animation concerning covalent bonding, and then we'll talk about each case on the other side. A covalent bond is the sharing of a pair of outer shell electrons by two atoms. For example, each of these hydrogen atoms has one electron in its outer shell, but needs two electrons to complete its outer shell. If the two hydrogen atoms share electrons, they can both complete their outer shells. The shared pair of electrons constitutes a covalent bond, shown in shorthand as a line. The covalently bonded hydrogen atoms form a molecule of hydrogen gas. A molecule is defined as two or more atoms held together by covalent bonds. An oxygen atom needs two electrons to complete its outer shell. Two oxygen atoms can share two pairs of electrons. A molecule of oxygen gas is held together by a double covalent bond, two shared pairs of electrons. A carbon atom needs four electrons to complete its outer shell. It can share electrons with four hydrogen atoms, forming a methane molecule containing four single covalent bonds. 
Methane is a compound, a substance formed by the combination of two or more elements. We call methane natural gas. It is the fuel burned in gas stoves and furnaces. An oxygen atom needs two additional electrons to fill its outer shell. Thus it can form two single covalent bonds. An oxygen atom can share electrons with two hydrogen atoms, forming a molecule of water containing two single covalent bonds. Okay, so here is the summary of that animation you just saw in table form. This is a table that's found in your textbook. Notice the columns here. The first column is the molecular formula. Molecular formulas is a way to describe the number of atoms that are forming the molecule itself. It's a chemical um, way to express what atoms are forming the molecule. So in hydrogen gas, which is being formed here, okay, hydrogen gas, the um, two hydrogens right, are symbolized by the H, and the subscript 2 is what's telling us how many hydrogens are being used to make the molecule. The next column is the electron distribution diagram, and it identifies the electrons being shared with each other and their electron shells, so that at any given time, each of those individual hydrogen atoms, this one here and this one here, will always have two electrons surrounding those nuclei, and that creates the covalent bond. And we symbolize that most commonly through what's referred to as the structural formula. And the structural formula here identifies the two atoms and the kind of covalent bond between them is symbolized by that single bond or single line. So this says that we have two electrons being shared here between these two hydrogen atoms, and that would be a single covalent bond. And then the space filling model here in the last column is a way to show the three-dimensional structure of any molecule. And right now it's not so important, but ultimately it'll become important when we take a look at things like protein, because protein shape is very dependent upon its three-dimensional structure. So if we go down the chart here, we can see oxygen, and this again is oxygen gas being formed by the combination of these two oxygen atoms coming together to form the bond. But the difference here is that we have a double bond in this case, because if they only shared one pair of electrons, there would still be a single electron available in each of those individual um, oxygen atoms. But by sharing two pairs, right, then that makes sure that each oxygen will have a complete valence of eight electrons in that outer shell. They start off with six, right? When they share one single bond, that allows them to share seven electrons, but when they share two pairs, uh, when they have two uh, pairs of electrons being shared, that means that eight electrons total will be found in those outer shells. So we symbolize that by a double bond. And again, you can see the symbolism for the electron um, here by the model, here by the double bond, and then by the space filling model here. All right, here's the next set of uh, molecules. And the difference here is that we've got different atoms that are coming together to form covalent bonds with each other. So here in our molecular formula, we show the molecular formula of water, which is H2O. When we go over here to the electron distribution diagram, we can see those two hydrogens. Here's one, here's two. Here's the single oxygen, 
And so that's what we end up seeing in the molecular formula. Two hydrogens and an oxygen as the molecular formula for water. The other thing we show here are the pairs of electrons that are being shared between oxygen and the hydrogen atoms themselves. And then that gets symbolized by our structural formula, which shows the single lines between the oxygen and the hydrogen. And then again, the space filling model here at the end. Methane shows carbon. And carbon is going to be an uh, atom that we talk about quite a bit. It's going to require four electrons to fill its outer shell. And so because it needs that, it can actually bond with four separate hydrogens, and that creates methane gas. So that's the last of our molecules here, another gas. But in each case, we can see the pair of electrons being shared at each carbon, and then we can symbolize that right by our single lines, and then again we can see the space filling model here as well. Here we can see the structural formulas for a variety of uh, molecules. So again, here's our carbon. Right? In this case here we can see it being bonded by three hydrogens but it's also forming a bond with another carbon here, and that's okay. That makes sense because this carbon here now has a pair of electrons, right? Four individual electrons that are being shared with hydrogens, those three hydrogens, and one of the carbons. Over here, we can see double bonds between these carbons, right? And then the single hydrogen bonds to each of the carbons. Right here we can see um, oxygen. Now notice how they're symbolizing this arrangement here, the oxygen and the hydrogen next to each other. We'll talk about that in a little bit. It's called a, a, a functional group. But what they're not showing you is the actual bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. It's there, but it's one of those shorthands that get used when you're using structural formulas like we're showing here. And then again, here's another double bond between these two carbons, and then again, lots of single covalent bonds between the other parts of that molecule. All right, another, we can describe two kinds of covalent bonds, actually. And the difference is how strongly one of the atoms of the two um, compete for the electrons to be in their electron cloud versus the other atom in the covalent bond. These are called polar covalent bonds. You see the term here. And it refers to the fact that in some covalent bonds, the electrons are going to be found around one atom over another because it's described as being more electronegative. That is, it has a pull for those electrons more greatly than the other atom. And oxygen is an example of an electronegative uh, substance. And it becomes very important in, um, in its electronegativity. Uh, carbon bonded to hydrogen, they don't really compete for the electrons because they don't have an electronegativity that isn't uh, different between each other. But oxygen has this higher electronegativity than most atoms, and because it does, the electrons tend to spend more time around that atom of the covalent bond over the other. So let's take a look at that in terms of water, because water is has these polar covalent bonds. And right now, they're being symbolized by those blue arrows that we can see here. Right? Here are those blue arrows, and they're showing that the electrons have a, they're being slightly more pulled to that oxygen atom. And because of that, 
that part of the molecule tends to be more negative. And this side of the molecule right, tends to be more positive. It creates poles right, in the molecule itself, kind of like a battery, where there's opposite charges within the molecule. And that's going to be really important ultimately when we talk about the properties of water and this polarity that exists within the molecule. And it's created because oxygen is our electronegative atom, and the hydrogens are less so, and so the electrons tend to spend more time around the oxygen. So take a pause here and read through these bullets. Make sure you're clear about polar covalent bonds. So the other kind of covalent bond is a nonpolar covalent bond. And that was, I introduced this when we started to talk about the two kinds of covalent bonds. So we have nonpolar covalent bonds. And so this means that the pull from each atom is equal to each other. They have the same electronegativity. So because they have the same, we aren't going to see any kind of charge difference within the molecule. It will be distributed completely throughout this structural formula or throughout this uh, individual molecule. And this happens to be uh, isobutane. It's the name of this molecule. And all of them, all of this molecule is made up of hydrogens and carbons. And they are, uh, each one of those lines represents a nonpolar covalent bond because the electronegativity between each carbon, each hydrogen is the same. So, woo, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to bonding, and we still have to talk about hydrogen bonding. So bring your questions about covalent bonding to class. We'll have some practice exercises that we will do, and I will see you in the lecture, you guys. Take care. Have a good evening, good day, whatever you're doing. Bye-bye.